while we're doing this and getting this all together, I want to say hello to everybody. Welcome to Enough is Enough SC 2020. I'm one of your co-hosts, Sean Cornelius, my man T. What's up, T? Hey, my brother. How you doing, man? I'm, I'm stupendous on this Monday, feeling gravy, you know what I mean? Thank you. Uh, excuse Thank me, Miss Onika over there. You might you want to turn your camera to the side and join us? You want to, you want to act like you all know? My, my camera's wrong. Turn it sideways. What about Come on, like that? There you go. You're right, all you're good, you're right now. Don't be scared to share. <laughs> so, Hello. Good, good, good evening, Mr. Blacksmith. Hello, sir. Hey. Good evening, everyone. How's everyone good doing? Good evening, Mr. Blacksmith. Wait a second. Good to see you all. Yeah, we 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 doing it the old school way. We wait. We doing it live right now. We're not. Someone's not ready yet. I already said hello. Ooh, someone, yo, yo, it's always me. Like you know what's so crazy? Last week you didn't even have all this energy for me because Tara wasn't here to back you up. But today, today, my brother, today, Excuse my me? brother, you trying to come? Here. Excuse me, really? You gonna lie like that in front of these folks? Same energy, different Monday. No, no, you hating harder right now because you know that you got talent. Yet last week I bossed you all the way around, and now this week you just trying to go. I, I, I don't even know what show you was on to realize. Now, you can look at the footage. Around. You can roll the beautiful bean footage, and it'll show you that I bossed them all around. Remember, Sean? No, no. I don't. No. Okay. No. Hi guys, welcome to Enough is Enough. I'm one of your co-hosts. I'm Onika McLean. I'm here with Sean Cornelius, his corny ass. And then the great <laughs> I think she still forgets the power. I think she still forgets about the power. You could be dismissed the whole show, you know. Okay, sorry. And your you know your mama don't like that. You said that last week. You, you, you know, told your mama. So funny. Wait, Talent, why I told him what my mother said? He gonna say, oh, my sister them said that you think it's all about you. Really watch when I see his sisters what I do. I'm coming for that. You know, I got these key boys for a reason. I got the, I'm from East New York. You let them keep talking about me, see what happened. You tell your sisters I said, they wanna see me, they want, okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm just kidding, sisters. I am just kidding. My bones are not here like they used to be. I used to be a scrapper. I ain't no scrapper no more. See, see how you do? Oh, you, was, you was a scrapper? <laughs> wow. Okay. That hey, explains the she, Oh, she wasn't a scrapper when that bully threw her underneath the car back in the Okay, but bully. after that. <laughs> but after that. <laughs> you know he died. I told y'all he died. Well, yeah, don't, don't try to make the show sad now. You did say that. You know what I, mean? I wasn't sad about him dying. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you back, T. Hey, Drusilla. Welcome. Hi. Hi, everybody. You know, Welcome that to the show, I just want to peep in and say hello. I'm just on break. Oh, okay. Yeah, we usually get now your picture. I want to say hi. Drusilla, have you shared it? Okay, guys, so we need you to take this opportunity to share the link to your uh, social media networks. Share, share, like. Uh, we'll give you guys two seconds to get it done. Just go to Sean Cornelius' page. Go down. Uh, it's going to be like the first post and just share it, share it to your story, share it to any, any groups that you're in, you have permission to do so, and then share it to your pages. We'd love to have this conversation. Tonight, we're going to talk about your president and COVID and what that is all about. And, you know, all these conspiracy theories now, you know, it's just the opportune time that he got it so that he can kind of like skirt tail a couple of debates. We're not thinking and we're not talking about what happened before this um, diagnosis that he would not denounce white, white supremacy. So we're going to get into it, guys. So let's start talking. <laughs> what and, do you guys think? There's still things, every, every day things are still popping off. People getting oh, yeah. positive testing uh, results. You see, you, you see what the latest is, right, guys? The latest... Um, he just forced his hand to get out of the hospital, go to the White House, back to the White House. Uh, when he still is infected, the doctors said it's not a good idea, but he made them let him out to go back to the White House. And everybody's like, why is he rushing back to the White House? And then come to think of it, what we forgot is today, the dumbest Trump member, uh, Eric Trump, had to testify, you know, for the whole fraud thing with the attorney general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... I think something has one thing is connected to what this rushing out to as well. We got a bunch of conspiracy theories. Maybe he's not even sick. Yeah, that's 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 what my thought is that he's not really sick because he has two more uh, debates that 
he can kind of like curtail if he is sick and then they'll just have the uh, the um, vice president debate and then we have the election as opposed to him. Because if, if you watch the debate, guys, I know that we, we aired our last show and the debates was, was that Tuesday. So if you watched the debate, guys, you saw what was going on. It was like just two grumpy old men having an argument and one of them was a whole bully. Like he said, this is the, the my best takeaway from the debate. And you please guys chime in and let me know what, what your highlight moment. My The highlight moment for me is when Joe Biden was getting all, all like um, patriotic. And he was like, you called those soldiers suckers. They are not suckers. My boy Bo fought in the war. And Trump said, I don't know Bo. But I know Hunter's on cocaine. <laughs> you know how you got two kids. You know how you got two kids, and one of them you be like, "Look at this one. Look at this one." They be like, "Oh, who you got in the back? Who you got in the back?" Oh, that's crackhead Hunter. Damn, Hunter, stop! I know when Jill and, and Joe Biden went home, they cursed Hunter ass out. But did you, but did you see like, how? Did you see how Joe's face? Everything changed on that at that time. By that point, just, <laughs> did you see his whole upset. demeanor just changed? Like he was like about to forget it was a debate. Yeah, he, he had to hold on to it. He, he got emotional <laughs> and angry at the same time. He wanted to cry and fight at the same time. <laughs> that I don't know, Bo, but I know Hunter on cocaine. <laughs> so disrespectful. <laughs> Who says so my kid on cocaine? <laughs> no, my my thing, my takeaway was it, it was uh, two takeaways. Obviously, the one when they asked him to denounce the white supremacist. And he said, who, who, who you want me? Who, who you want me? <laughs> right? name. Name. Like, like this man got, he got mad gangs. Which one, who you want me to, who you want me to? <laughs> I was like, this, this dude is gangster. But my thing was, when Joe gangster. got frustrated, he frustrated Joe Biden so much to the point when Joe said, man, will you shut up? But it was like a pause where you know fuck was supposed to be in there. Yeah. Like you <laughs> shut the fuck up, like when he caught himself. He said, man, will you shut up? Shut like, up, man. You know what he wanted? To say? I felt his pain and anguish. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about. That's that's what we've been waiting. We've been waiting for somebody to stand up there, not back down, and, and tell you to shut up. Because you telling people to shut up. Yeah. Right. And when he called yeah. him a clown. Yeah. Like, yeah. As a clown. Like, when have you ever heard anybody call the president of the United States in his face? A clown. Like, this, this guy's a clown. Well, he did good by just calling him a clown. I mean, yeah. really, he did great by just calling him a clown because yeah, that's guys call people um, everything but the child of God, man, uh, since he's been in office. So uh, he's been calling Joe Sleepy Joe this whole time. Joe did look a little sleepy, though. But, yeah. Okay. And then the right, <laughs> the white, the white, the, the right wing media, they ran with the fact that Joe called him a clown. He called the president a clown. I listened. <laughs> I said, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> you got to yeah. be kidding me. It was the most entertaining I got more than I bargained for. It, it, it wasn't was entertaining that, for me. It wasn't entertaining. I just was like, I'm just happy that they were two old white men. That's all. Well, when I sometimes say that, you got to see the buffoonery, you know, in it. Sometimes you got to see, because a lot of people think because you're white, you're right. And if you're a white male, then you have to have some kind of intelligence. And that's not always the case. Well, what I, what I was going to say is that it was, and I, I said entertaining first, but what I should have, actually said what it was sadly entertaining because you know you looked at this and you said wow these this is the president of the United States and we're talking about he is supposed to control and be in control of this country and he's got none he's got right. no control none and I think that was on full display if anybody is thinking about putting this man in office you had to realize like how is he going to run the office who's going to run him you know. But he's been running the office, so it's not that he, he's not running the office. It's just the way that it should be ran. You know, that's that's what's happening. So I don't, well, I don't want to interrupt your conversation. I'm just going to put this. I'll put this up when we get a comment because there's some people that are commenting already. And uh, the, Dr. Carmen Colquitt Turk says Joe should have said, "Let's Google nudes of first ladies. Let's talk about that." Oh uh, Jesus! And Jessica said he's a reality show president. And I use the word president in the in the in this context lightly. 
Um, Orlando says only over his supporters he does have that control. That's it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't control anybody but his supporters. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, I call, I don't even like to say this. I call him FOH 4 5. Fuck out of here. 4 5. 45th president. We know what that is. Now, let, let me get to this conspiracy part. I think yeah. one of my beliefs is that he needed two things to, to, to come out and say that I tested positive. He needed a couple of things. One, he was so far behind and people's opinion was changing and, and rotating on him that he needed some sort of sympathy play for one. But more importantly, the bigger picture is the drugs that he's gonna say that helped him through fight COVID are the drug companies and drugs he's invested in. Right. So right. automatically, uh, that the Cura Quinn thing he's taken, he's already tried to pump that, but now he's begun, he's going to be the self living proof of. See what I'm saying? I had it. I had to go to the hospital. I took this, and then I'm clean. And that drug, that pharmaceutical business is going to shoot through the roof. That is the biggest, most. Well, then, then, then he is. Then he is one smart cookie. I don't think so. Now, don't take a rocket scientist for that. He already he tried to push the drug, but. Now to say that I got COVID and that I, and then and I lived through it, that's the biggest seller I need to yeah. endorse this drug. I don't need the FDA. I don't need right. the CDC. I'm living proof. I'm the president. That's just like we just talked about his base. Let's let's be honest with ourselves. His base is anywhere between 30 and 35, if not 40 percent of this country, the ignorant side of this country. So that's all I need to make a multi-billion dollar move off of this. Un, unfound, unproven drug. Yeah, he wouldn't be the first they, person. He wouldn't be the first person to push an unproven drug. It's all about the money. No, it, it's all about this. But they've been using this cocktail on on people that have affluence for a little while now. Because I know that my pastor uh, took some drug that the FDA didn't um, approve, and he got better. And he's a you know an older man, so mm -hmm. they've been doing this. So. Yeah, he wouldn't be the first one, but he, imagine a personal endorsement. It ain't no different. There's a reason why presidents and people and candidates running for the presidency go all over the country and fight for endorsements because there's a group of people that follow each endorser. So right, when you see the, the Christian church coalition, they get those church people that follow that. When you right. see uh, uh, the Koch brothers, they got to follow an influence and financial influence in the industry as well. So people are looking for the police unions, the, you know what I mean? The teams, to, they look for all of these things because they all collectively have their own constituencies. And once you put them all together, all those numbers add up. So trust me, there's enough people out there that are going to follow this man if he says that this drug brought me back. Right, right. I, I, I just don't believe it. I just believe that it's, it was a way to change the narrative because that Mitch McConnell even denounced when he said um, that he didn't outright denounce white supremacy groups and even Mitch McConnell, like all of his ride or dies was like, wait a minute, now that natty done went too far. So I think that this was just a start to change the narrative. What right. do you think, Sean? That's what I was going to, I really was going to just ask the question straightforward. Who, what, what do we really believe? Do you believe? I believe he might have it. Mm -hmm. I mean, because my thing was, if, if he doesn't, then all these other people that are claiming to have all these other tests that have come positive, Chris Christie, and all these people that were with, with him at this function, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's a whole cahoots of everybody Wait. being in it, you know, involved with the whole scam. Chris, you know Chris I mean? Christie said that they was briefing him for that, for that debate. From Thursday to Tuesday, they didn't leave. From Thursday to Tuesday, he answered one question. Is that crazy? It, it's, I'm kind of like I'm kind of split too because there are things leading that he's, he doesn't. But you know, but I really don't know. Do you, do you or LA? Do you think he has it? I think he does. And like you said, um, it's not just him. It's nine other people, eight other people that were associated with that um, uh, Supreme Court justice uh, um, meeting there that came out of that group that uh, have also been tested as positive. So I think he does. I agree with um, talent that this is about the money. 
Um, I believe that um, he has, um, he is invested in it. Um, but I also believe that he's invested in it from a point that if I can produce a cocktail or something, whatever that works before the election, this is to his benefit. Right. And I'm a walking example of this. So uh, let me drop and drop a couple of these comments from Facebook. Uh, welcome, Bridget Jones, Freddie Ricks. Dr. Carmen says COVID took the heat off of the Proud Boys BS. Yeah, that's uh, what I think, Carmen. Yeah. Orlando says that bingo, that's why he went back two days later to the White House to show his people that this drug works well for someone his age. Um, Dr. Carmen says, I really did not understand how Nazi Germany worked until now. How one ass clown, it's her word, gets followers to believe this nonsense. And Orlando says he has it. It's about the drug given to him, but normal people aren't going to get that drug and that dosage that he that he got. That's right. Right, because it's going to be people of affluence, right? Of course, that's it's right. going to be people that can afford it. That's right. That's what. Mm -hmm. well, that's how drug companies set up anyway, right? The the low man gets gets nothing because their life is not worth it. Well, unless, unless you're the guinea pig. The way the way pharmaceuticals work is the guinea pigs are usually very bottom, what they consider bottom, and they work and play with them to, to work the kinks out or get it to a sustainable place. Now, the difference in America in the last decade, what we need to understand about drugs is this. If you go back more than 10 years ago, America was very steadfast on getting all the drugs and food stuff through the regulations of the country meaning right. the FDA mm -hmm. and the CDC had to approve of this and all that. We're no longer, we haven't been in that realm in about a decade. So now there is no law against you peddling a drug that has not been approved by the FDA. Right, because of cancer drugs, because, right, because of all those yeah. cancer drugs that weren't, yep. that weren't working and it was taking so long to get the approval that so many people were dying, right. So now you don't, we don't live in that world no more. We don't live in that country where that's the country you used, used to live in. You couldn't peddle this thing. You couldn't do anything. When they opened all that up, now you see all these commercials and infomercials at all hours of the night. They got a pill for everything. They, they, now they say if your dick curve, that's a problem. They got a pill for that. What, what's wrong with a curve? Uh, I, I understand that's a problem. No, that's a real, they, I, don't get me wrong because I don't know the, the, <laughs> the terminology. But people called, used to, what's people, it called, curvature? But we used to, we grew up with dudes bragging on that. Oh, I go left, I curve right. And now they saying that if you have the curve, it's some sort of thing and they can treat it. It's called cure the curve. Mm -hmm. Cure the curve. I think all the other brothers in this thing right here is like, we're like looking crazy. You, you see, uh, you see everybody's face is like, huh? The curve. No, but I'm telling <laughs> you, the point of that, the point I bring that up is, it's not an approved drug. My whole point is we're in a place now when it comes to pharmaceuticals in this country, you don't have to be approved by anything to sell it. You, if now you've got the, the money, you can run the ads. How many, I know I ain't the only one that's up at, on watching TV and see a hundred medications for a hundred things that we said, most people sitting back like, what, the, what is that? No, but right. they're selling it. And, and talent, each medication has got 200 side effects associated with it. Exactly. We have to get more medications. That's how they operate. That's how they operate. Yeah. Uh, let me go through another comment from uh, Alicia Melendez. She says, I can't believe any medical doctor would go along with the make-believe diagnosis. He has it for sure, but changing the narrative is his MO. Um, then Dr. Carmen says, honey curve, yes. I don't know. I guess that curve conversation is called. Okay. <laughs> she says honey curves, and she says all curves matter. So I guess it's some stuff. I, I have no. All right, idea. we got a comedian on the, in the house. I got yeah, I guess so. All right, so T. No, let's let's go to Quiz because Quiz popped in. Hey, Quiz, do you believe? What is your thought process? Does you think he has it, or do you think he doesn't have? It? Well, I I think he has to have it because what happens is if he doesn't, the doctors lose their license, they lose their livelihood by going along with that. Um, I think he's trying to push that drug and I think he gonna pass out in the White House and they gonna take his ass back. And 
that's what's going to happen to him because he's been a mockery of the situation the whole time and people are catching it in the White House. So I think he has it. I think he's just trying to uh, enable the pushing of this drug because somewhere in the back office, he got some money involved in that. So he has it without any symptoms? You know, a lot like, of people are asymptomatic, asymptomatic with that. Oh, but, well, no, he's not He's not asymptomatic. Oh, because he's had some things. It's been he said years. he was tired. They said fatigue. No, he had the fever, too. He, he had, had the, the, the small fever and all that, yeah. Mm-hmm. And his oxygen, they had to give him oxygen on Saturday. So, so was, I think I think they're going to treat him in the White House, though, because to other countries and stuff, remember when the China guy was sick, other people look at that as a term of weakness. So I think they put him back in the White House to make it look away. But I think he's sick. But, but one of the things that bothers me is <clears throat> knowing that this man has it, if he, he has it, right? And who else would they let come out of the hospital and do that whole motorcade thing? Like somebody has to have some well, kind he, of authority. He's the president, though. So somebody he, has to have some kind of authority to say no, some medical situation. You understand? Now you're putting other They said that. In they said no. They said that he wasn't. But what, what, what Donald Trump just said, right? What he just tweeted is uh, a one minute long video. And what he said is that he's learned so much about the coronavirus and that he says uh, he believes that he's possibly immune to the disease. And one thing for certain, he says, do, don't let it dominate you. Don't let the virus dominate you. Don't be afraid of it because you're going to beat it. He says, we have the medical equipment and we have the best medicines all developed recently and we're going to beat it. That's what he tweeted. See, that's him pushing those meds. And try- that's him pushing the meds. Yes, he just tweeted. Who's going to believe him except his followers? Mm-hmm. You know, the average person with common sense uh, got another comment. Um, and now he said, and he says, listen, he said, he said that he didn't feel so good two days ago, but now he hasn't felt better in 20 years. From that cocktail you know here's my thought on that because i had the coronavirus and uh, you know again the first day or so i didn't feel so bad but um eight days in i thought i was gonna die i'm serious you know it affected my breathing um it affected uh because i'm an asthmatic so that's a, a condition that makes me high risk um i had the fever the fever came on uh, the loss of taste came on, but the, the main thing was that breathing. And it was right. at a point where my doctor was telling me to go to the emergency room. And um, I honestly felt that if I went in, I wouldn't come out. So I said, I took my chances of staying home and dealing with herbal uh, remedies, which mm-hmm. at the day is what brought me through it. But you really yeah. can't say how this is going to affect you until you get it. Yeah. I got a couple of family members that have it and they don't have any uh, real symptoms except right. heavy breathing at night. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And then there's a number of people that are dealing with long-term effects, you know. Oh, they're called the long haulers. Have you, have we talked about that? Mm-hmm. If you, if you Google coronavirus or COVID-19 and long haulers, so they have people that have gotten uh, the virus in March, mm-hmm. in April, mm-hmm. and they got over it but right. they never got rid of the symptoms. So right. they still have trouble breathing. That's they still right. have a crazy fatigue. That's right. All these all these symptoms, they can't like take care of their kids. It's called the long haulers. And it's not just women or men, it's all ages. All they don't ages. even know, there's no predetermining factor, but you get it, there's a, there's, there's a, if you live, you may not ever be the same again. It's That's called the exactly. long haulers. Let me jump to so, a couple of these so comments. From there really to quick. now, they're still dealing with it. Yeah. Orlando says, love this forum. I see some knowledge on this call. Good to see my cousin Nico on this. He And I guess commenting to your passing out, he already passed out. Um, mm-hmm. There's a comment about the, uh, the drug situation. 210,000 people have died already. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ursuline says, tell that to my family member that died. Yeah. Right. Uh, Dr. Cohn, what, what about all those who have died? Right. Mm-hmm. Rob Gibbs says, all of this is about big pharma and profits being made from the vaccination. Yeah. Um, and someone said, Ursus, I've heard about the long haulers. And see, that's the thing. We know it's real. We know something's going down. We know something's going on. And we know this is a partial plan to get his whole thing, the election. Uh, look at what's going on now in the NFL. Because you're a sports guy. 
Look what's happening with the football players and, and all those kind of things happening now. They're canceling games, postponing things because football players are now contracting the whole deal, which is ridiculous. I mean, look what's going on at the schools. They're getting ready to close schools up here in New York tomorrow in certain areas, the hot spots. Yeah. You know, certain schools. So, so we know that things are happening. That's why I'm saying my thing is somebody should have been able to say, nah, you can't go riding around. I know I don't care if you're the president. This thing is killing people. So and he's putting Secret Service in jeopardy. People who's in the car with him, and you got to keep in mind he's in a sealed, airtight vehicle. So it's not like he's getting fresh air coming through there. Them people in the car in close proximity to him. The chief of staff has it now. So it's he kind of making a circus out of this thing while people are actually dying from this. You know what I mean? Well, you guys know Melania now had some kind of surgery just the other day. She's in. In the hospital. No, but Melania uh, has it too, though. She has, the, yeah, she has the she has the virus, but she just had to have some kind of surgery. I'll look it back up. I saw it before we came on, but it was some kind of benign thing they had to remove. But how could her. they have? Well, how could you get a surgery when you have COVID? Right, like, that's not, that's no, not. because my mom had to. My mom recently had hip replacement, and they tested her the day before. She had to quarantine for a couple of days, and then they tested her in the hospital before they did the surgery. So, how could that be? Well, again, you're looking president's at the president's wife. The president's wife, the first lady. <laughs> look, look at what they're doing, like the president went around. Privileged. <laughs> but if we're talking about doctors not uh, co-signing something that's not the truth, then why would they do something like have a surgery that's benign on a COVID patient? Doesn't that expose the hospital? Like what? And the doctor? I can't um, answer. I'll look it up while that's we- a little, little, you know, Come on. That, that sounds a little, little fishy. Well, so I mean, everything about it is fishy. When his doctors first came out, you know, they slipped up and said they wasn't supposed to tell us that he needed the oxygen. And they right. slipped up and said that. And then they went back and got into the doctors. The doctors came back out with a whole new press conference and cleaned it up. So then in, when they opened up for questions, the, the reporters wasn't stupid. They was like, um, why would you say that and then say this? You know, it's mixed message. And the doctors straight up said, well, I was trying to make it sound like the administration wanted it to sound because they wanted people to know up to this extent. And I kind of said a little much, but I want, this is the picture they wanted to paint. Basically in so many words saying, I changed it because they wanted me to change. They didn't want it to look a certain way. They wanted to look less, like it wasn't as extravagant. You gotta understand something. The guy who just released a book talking about Trump and uh, even in uh, Cohen's book, he does divulge the information of, because the, the question comes into mind, is there anything medically wrong uh, with the president or physically that he needs meds for? And he said he takes meds, but he takes meds for, uh, he has breathing issues already. Right. And he takes meds for that. But if you really look at Trump, I think Trump has some, some work done in the, the nasal area. And he always sounds like it, if you pay attention, with the breathing and how he talks. So he may have to take meds ever since he did whatever he had to do, whatever procedure he had. So now imagine you already got a breathing issue that you're mm -hmm. taking meds for, and this is a respiratory virus. So, yeah. so like my brother L.A. said, he's like, I, I'm asthmatic, I'm at risk. So apply that to whatever the, the, the breathing problem is with your president, same thing. Right. Yeah. Oh. Mm. So how do you think that's going to affect everything going forward, especially coming up with the vice president to debate? Well, they're doing plexiglass. That's what they said. They said that Pence and Harris are going to uh, be in plexiglass um, enclosures when they debate. Well, that's cute. Mm hmm. That's, Nothing that's, really, here's my thing. My thing is that's, uh, CNN said this. They could have learned something from us comedians doing all these comedy shows in the last 30 years. We 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 got the simple resolution. Just cut them off your mic off. If I tell you you got two minutes and you're going over your two minutes, you're gonna sound like this. <laughs> you're gonna have to cut them off. Yeah, you gotta cut them off because yeah. mockery. 
he made a mockery of the moderator. Yeah. It was a joke. <laughs> Total joke. And you know what? Here's the real conspiracy, though. This brother knew, 4 or 5 knew that he was infected when he went to this thing because the, the moderator said it was ironic how they, they made sure they were just late enough that they couldn't get tested because part of the thing was to test for the COVID. But they, Trump and his entourage came in late enough where they wasn't able to test them and make the start time and everything. So that means you knew you had this. It makes right. sense because now the White House has become a hotspot. And, and I very rarely watch Fox News, but I was I slid past it uh, the other night and Chris Wallace was talking to somebody, I forgot the name, but they showed, he was talking about how they were, they were disregarding the rules. Like they weren't wearing their masks during mm -hmm. the debate. Oh, right. They, and, you know, and, and they said that um, his crew, right? Because right, I feel right. like they, those are yeah, the, uh, the Kardashians, yeah. like his daughters, like his yeah. administration, they came and they sat down and they didn't have on their masks. Right. And uh, one of the attendees tried to give them masks and was like, would you guys want to? And they were like, nah, we're good. They were like, we're good. It, it looked like the Kardashians, the way they like cut, because you know, all his daughters work for him. It's just kind of, you know. So it, it really goes back to what we talked about last week and the prior weeks, man, when we talk about people got to vote. We already know what's happening. Nothing should surprise us with Trump, even if it comes out that this was you know, some setup cut in this thing. The only way we can not have to deal with this is go vote him out. Vote him yeah. out. You know, so this again should show people how important outside of his followers that it is to vote. Well, wait a minute. Let me ask you something, because I think I heard this. I'm not sure if it's a rumor uh, that he said if he loses, he's not leaving. Right. Did you say that? He said that. Yeah, he did say that. <laughs> the, the, the party. I, I he has to see. That, he has I to see. I have this joke that Donald Trump is a gangster. Now, I've been doing this joke for four years, right? Damn it. Yeah. But uh, it's the joke that keeps on giving because he always say some other gangsters. How are you not going to leave the White House? What are you talking about, sir? We have protocols set up. Yeah, but what he did is he's, he's in the last four or five months he's been setting the stage right for that this election is going to be a fraud right and right. if these these uh, results come in and it's fraudulent. I'm not going anywhere. This is the whole point goes back to what we talked about with the Supreme Court justice. That's why they're rushing to put somebody in there because they know what he's going to do and force it to the courts. And if it goes to the Supreme Court and That's they it. have the numbers, they hand them the presidency. That's it. That's why when people say stuff like, oh, he's the idiot. And I'm like, no, he's diabolical. Yeah. Like he, right. the world is playing checkers and he is playing advanced chess. It sounds, it looks crazy because he's doing stuff like, fuck you, fuck, fuck, fuck. but meanwhile, back at the ranch, things is really happening in his favor, is all I'm saying. Well, I mean, that's the people around him. He's, don't get it twisted. Don't give him any more credit than he deserves. He's not bright at all. He shows you that every chance he get. However, you still have- I mean, He doesn't have a bad vocabulary, you. I know. You know, you have people around you that do know this law and that's do right. know the ins and outs and the trick, trick, you know, trickology. So. Have it's not that he knows, but he does have a camp, you know, and that it behooves them the same way it does him to stay in office because that's how all these people's livelihood. That's how they make money. That's how they and make then, money. And then he won't have to face those uh, open charges that he already has. Like he has a lot of cases. A he don't lot. Want, that's another reason he don't want to get out of it. That's right. right. They will come after him. They they're going to come after him. They can like come after him. He got a lot of open cases. Like, uh, here's like, a couple like, of comments from Facebook about his health. Like tonight, when he took off his mask tonight, he was breathing hard. His neck and jaw movement showed, showed that he's still sick. And it's a signal to the world of how strong he is. Well, he's trying to show that. He doesn't want to show weakness. Also, someone said, Alicia said, I mean, Ms. Melinda says, he said the courts will decide. That's why they're pushing the Supreme Court nomination. Right. Of um, course, the courts you. will decide. The court, I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science. This court decided with Bush. The courts, right, the judicial branch is going to be like, and if you have all those Republicans in there, conservative, that's, that's what we're doing. That's right. Taking it that's right out of the hands of the people. Yeah. 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 Uh, they're going to have an issue, Bob. Uh, 
Word. They they even have a um they even have a, a a campaign going on and it's called uh, Republicans for Biden. Have you guys yeah, heard that's, about that? That's the guys that's behind the Lincoln Project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a big movement. They put they put a ton of money, billion dollars, like on in the ads and all that stuff. Um, they're doing a wonderful job. I mean, here's the thing: the reality is, like like uh, Sean said, we got to circle back to the key of voting, right? When we get out there and vote, some of these old ass pain in the ass senators, Republican senators, they mm -hmm. up this year. Mm -hmm. They up this year. So we're we're looking to that if we do, if we swarm the voting like we're supposed to, you get mm -hmm. four or five of those guys and girls out of there and replaced mm -hmm. with some more progressive thinking. You know what I mean? Younger, like, younger people. Liberal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To change the game in that essence. Because the bottom line is this. Anybody that can't see, and they're not, like I said, you know, some of us are saying, oh, it's a conspiracy. Some of us say, I think you got it, you don't got it. Understand this, people. Both things can be true at the same time. Right. right. He can actually have it, and at the same time, pushing these pharmaceuticals and these, these financial agendas over here with people he's in bed with. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? So all things can be true at the same time. I do believe he has it for the simple fact that my key thing of believing that he has it is he's a narcissist. And for him to be away from any type of thing for two, three days where he can't be seen, talk some shit, tweet some <laughs> shit, blah, 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 you know, get somebody, he would never do that of his own free will. To disappear for two, three right, days, right. he would never do that of his own free will. He's too narcissistic to do that. Now, I, I, I agree that he's narcissistic. I just like that Melania having a surgery while she has COVID. Just it's just making me sick. It's giving me what, pause. What kind of surgery? Yeah, what? I'm trying to look it back up and find it. I'll find it while we're still doing. It. Yeah. Now is it before. is it a surgery that is related to this, or I'm just you no, know, many no. I might as well get my titties lifted up. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't related to COVID. No, oh, I don't see anything related to COVID. I was looking for yeah. it, but I don't see anything since 2018. And see, again, that's that's the whole. Oh no, thing. but you're thinking about you're thinking about that, that's that's a plastic surgery. Yeah, that was a plastic surgery. That not was it. See, that's the no, thing. She it's, had it's, kidney. It's, she had kidney surgery. In 2018, May of uh, 2018, May in 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 the month of May. She yeah, I don't up. see anything. I don't see anything about her having. See, that's surgery. the whole thing because again, like you said, all these things coming out and what whatever news is here and there, you kind of don't know what to to really. Yeah, no. Someone, yeah, not sure. someone can say this and then they'll run with it. You know, yeah. like you said, you well, he was all right this weekend. No, he wasn't. They, they, when mm -hmm. they came out, he had he had to get oxygen. He had all these things going on. So everything is coming, and you don't really know. That's why I, I, we're having this discussion because it's just out there and we don't know. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. We go back to what we just said a few minutes ago about this this whole uh, rally and, and over the justice and everybody's there, nobody's wearing masks. Kellyanne Conway, she, she's got it now. Mm -hmm. The other little girl, uh, the, the press secretary, she got it now. Yes. That press secretary, the way... The media was um, Kaylee, Kaylee portraying her. It kind of felt like that was his girlfriend. Like it just, it felt, I was like, like her hair was flowing. It was just a, it was sensual a little bit. And I was like, oh, he got it from his girlfriend because it just didn't make sense. Like that girl is hot. And I was like, and I know a cheetah when I see a cheetah. No, and I'm you, know, you have, you've been good this whole, for at least 40, 45 minutes. You was really okay, good. This, we this, didn't get anything. Are y'all saying this is my go-to mode? <laughs> is this what I always talk about? Is this, is this what I always talk about? You am always I, come back to cheating I, on some am I, topic. Am, do I have like post-traumatic stress? Am, am, am I PTSD? Or, I, I, 
I thought you was the cheater. You shouldn't have PTSD. Wasn't you? Cheater? cheater. Here we go with the bullshit. I told you I wasn't no cheater. I said that women <laughs> should start cheating. I didn't say I was going to do it. You see what I'm saying? We always got to go back to me. And it wasn't okay. We, you always got to go back to, it's a conspiracy. I'm just telling you what I thought when I watched the news, Sean. This is enough is enough. I have to give you my perspective. I am one of the commentators on the show. But we were talking about the president, not Miss Oniki. Your birthday was last week. I was talking about the lady. That and then you got the question. cheating, and okay. then we brought it to you. Maybe he wasn't cheating with her. Maybe he wasn't. Sorry. Let me go back to some comments over here. Uh, Ms. Melinda Maybe says, PTSD. I'm going to go to therapy. Everybody Y'all think out. I should go to therapy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just playing. Okay. Are you ready to be quiet for a second? You good? All right. Be good. Uh, is, Melinda says, we need to get rid of everybody. Start with Mitch McConnell. Lizzie Graham, Tom Tillis, Rand Paul, and the whole bunch of them. D. Rose says uh, the SCOTUS justices should be voted in instead of appointed to be truly representative of the people. And it shouldn't be a lifetime appointment. Anyway, that's a long time. Right. Lifetime. We still got Clarence Thomas in there. Like that? Maybe it's like okay. a, yeah, uh, replace people. Are that's another about. cheater, Clarence Thomas. Remember Anita Hill? Okay, sorry, never mind. Uh, please hang on a second. Your mama gonna get mad at me watching what's that happening. I used to always get Clarence Thomas mixed up with Mary and Barry. They'd be like, Clarence Thomas, but he's still smoking crack. You're like, that's not him. I'm like, mute yourself, Onika. Oh my God. Remember oh Anita Hill with the Pepsi and she he said yeah. take the Pepsi and do a little thing. Okay. So hold on. Let me ask you a question, Quincy. Um, so what do you think if if it's a conspiracy and if it's a uh, ulterior motive at play here, what what do you see the next step going in the next 24, 48 hours? Because we're at the beginning of the week, so you know some shit's coming. Mm -hmm. Unmute yourself, Quincy. Unmute yourself, Quincy. Why did you mute him in the first place, Sean? I Go did ahead. mute him. I, I muted myself, oh Nico. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, no, I think don't take I think the bass out your voice when you say my name. The 48 hours, they're gonna be they're gonna be quiet. They're gonna figure out which direction his health is going. Because remember, they have to try to be five steps ahead of us. So if they know his health is deteriorating, they're gonna start doing extra steps. So when they do come out and say anything, they'll have a, a something already for us. So I think he they're gonna be quiet. It, 24 to 40. He already said it. What happened? He already said it. He said that he feels better than he has in 20 years. No, but Tyler asked the question of in the next 24 to 48 hours. So I'm mm -hmm. saying the next 24 to 48, they're going to go quiet. And they're okay. going to go quiet to figure out which way it's going. He say anything. They're not going off him. You know what I'm saying? So once he does that, because keep in mind, the debate is supposed to be Wednesday. Well, that's the, the presidential that's debate. The, no, no, the vice, vice president. president. That's, the VP. that's next week, right? Yeah, yeah. No, the, they the, got to tell the, us the something before that happens. The yeah. presidential debate is October 15th. 15th or 14th? 15th is what it says on CNN. Okay. So they got to figure out what's going to happen because I think they're trying to get out of the debates. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's better for us for him to be on Zoom because it's easy to press that button and mute him. But I think... Your girl uh, Kamala is gonna tear Pence ass up. Oh, she you know, is. They trying to pre they trying to prepare Pence for that shit right now. <clears throat> yeah, so she's gonna she, she 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 on it. I mean, she's a trial attorney. She's on it. Well, she's she gonna, that's that's a, that's that shouldn't be hard for her because you have uh, a person who has animated skills going against a robot. You know what I mean? Right. So. He, one thing we know he's not going to do is he's not going to connect with people in the audience, whether they're in the building or through the screen. He doesn't have connectability. She does. So it's really her debate to screw up because she, she can be a people person. We've seen her on the campaign trail. We've seen her. She know how to hug the babies and kiss the babies and shake yeah. the hands. So she, we know she can do that. Mm -hmm. But you're going against a robot. So what you also can't do, because Biden 
to be honest with you, and, I, and, and I, you know, that's my dude. I mess with Biden over Trump. But he almost bit into the bait. He almost took the bait too much. Right. He, he took it. I think, just he lost, I think he lost that debate because he didn't get anything out. No, you couldn't. You couldn't lose that debate. No, he um, didn't. Yeah, when you got a clown performing the way he performed, you win by default. He could have. He could have did like this and let him clown out and still won the way Trump was acting. But what what made uh, Biden seal it was like he said. He stood up to him. He stood the ground mm -hmm. a couple of times, and he was chewing on that bait a little bit. But he got. He, he gathered himself. And a couple of times towards the end, he looked in that camera at the American people. Right, that's it. And he talked to him, something that Trump don't do. Trump was pointing at him, right. and beating with him like two thugs in the street. Right. Biden was he caught himself, gathered himself, mm -hmm. and turned to that camera and said, "Listen, people, you please want blah, vote. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. Please right. vote. Please vote." Yeah, right. that was key. Yeah. That was key. I agree. That was key. Mm. Uh, everybody's agreeing on uh, Facebook. Uh, so yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I, I just think it's hers to lose. You know what I mean? Because she, she's the. You know how it is. We go into these competitions and we go into them with a favorite. Like right now, the Lakers are favorite to win. You know what I mean? It's their series to lose. So right. same thing with Kamala. Kamala is hers to lose because this guy's a robot. He's not going to out personality you. He's not going to connect more than you, whatever case may be. And let, you got to get in there and blow that chance. Are we still he's not going to engage um, moderators? Moderators? No, it changes. Moderator changes. Every every debate changes. Uh -huh. So who we having for the moderator? It, I hope it's Samuel L. Jackson. Somebody else said. Oh, these motherfucking states. Who oh, these motherfuckers. <laughs> Somebody else said. Yeah, it's crazy. All right, so hey man, definitely good conversation. Now you guys know there was another, just to jump really fast, another uh, man killed, black man killed by the police. Uh, Where? Uh, Jonathan Price was shot Saturday night uh, in Santa Fe, Wolf City. And he said he was trying to break up a disturbance, a fight. And he had his hands up and he's breaking up the fight and was shot to death. Not too far from Dallas. Not too far from Dallas. Look, Jonathan Price. And what is the actual story with my man, that, that uh, the actor that we just lost from Gunshot too? Oh, in Atlanta, I don't in know. In Atlanta. Spike, Spike Lee, one of Spike Lee's actors. What, what is the story though? I don't even know. The right, story. He got shot multiple times. And I even went to the AJC.com, which is the Atlanta Journal of Constitution, that newspaper. And it just said multiple shots, got a call, he was down. They didn't say if it was robbery or what. Right. I hadn't heard that yet, that story. So again, right. as, as we continue to talk and we talk about these things, things continue to happen where we're being taken out. Um, this is why we started this thing, Enough is Enough, and we started talking about it. Um, but this was our conversation we had, will it, will it ever end? You know, uh, is it gonna stop? Uh, and it's continued to happen since. You gotta vote, man. Send me that story, Sean. We'll do. We'll do that story, but we, you know, hey, the Sean. yes, sir. Uh, What's dope, man, is how you upgraded that Verizon Files, man. Um, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you, like, I tell, I tell you some of the older comedians, some jokes you just gotta let them go, bro. You gotta leave them hey. alone, you gotta bury them. Because hey. you gotta bury them, yo, they still yo, work. Don't the, they don't work. work. They, 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 they still, still, work. Hold on a second, they Quincy. Let me, let me let me do this real quick, Quincy. You? Now, me and you can talk. Uh, go ahead, brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you upgrade your Wi-Fi. <laughs> you know what happens, though? Let me tell you what happens, though. You didn't, you didn't mute not one male, not one male comedian that was on this call. It's I hear she about to pull a, she about to pull a woman car. Yeah, she but, took her glasses oh, off. Not one male on here, here is jumping out crazy. Saying all kinds of stuff. Talking out of turn, just said, oh, You are acting you like the president of the United Quincy States right me. now. Mighty, y'all acting like Quincy is a damn See? CNN commentator. See? You know, I was talking to Quincy. Quincy, I'm Quincy was talking show. to me. It's me, you, and Talent. And As I was saying, this is what they should have done in the debate. <laughs> this is what they should have done to Trump. <laughs> now you got these new people coming do. out here saying stuff like they are doing on experts. I expect that from Quincy, though. We know that's what he's going to do. That's fine. 
Hey, well, and you, you got jump this... in the middle of two grown men having a conversation. Oh, grown men. <laughs> now you got us. Now we going back and forth. Best. What we talk? Oh, grown men having a conversation. So me, the little uh timid woman, must sit down and not say anything. <laughs> and people are not spoken to. Oh, Nika. <laughs> What you, you you had a little express yes, or something? <laughs> I did. I had so much coffee today. <laughs> yeah, you you on fire today? No, this is every week. You every week? Every week she gets muted. So and she told she told her mother on me. Like, no, no, I didn't tell my mother on you because my mother was watching and my mother said, "What's the guy with the foggy um?" The camera screen. I don't know. I know your mother ain't talking about my screen. First of all, that the guy. Tell your mama that. Tell your mama that. How my foggy screen can still mute her daughter. Now, yeah. Thank you. I upgraded. That's hilarious. Thank you very much. And then she wants to talk about it after I done cleaned the screen tonight. Why are you gonna bring it up now? With the guy with the foggy. And she That's didn't even hilarious. say that. See, that was Onika trying to get her mother in trouble. Her mother, she told us the whole hey. story last week about what her mother said. Did you didn't now you're trying to ad lib. <laughs> and you know what's crazy, crazy is blacksmith, look, the picture behind him looked like a little wax museum joint. Like, yeah, we have some rules for the next time people come. Don't use no virtual background. Clean up. No, blacksmith, Clean you scared me to attack. What's going on? The virtual background like cuts your head off like that. It makes hey, sense. T, blacksmith looking like, what are they talking about? <laughs> We're talking about you, sir. Hey, no. you. Uh, uh, you look yeah, like yeah. you're in the Matrix. You look I, I, like I, 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 yes, I, Morpheus. You look like Morpheus. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. Calm down for a second. I, I was numb. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, on a serious note. Um, I was reading about because I didn't hear about this Jonathan Price killing uh, until now, and um, I was. Can you find it? it? I can't find it. I found it, man. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this brother, man. He was a beloved figure in Wolf City, uh, Wolf's Wolf, or Wolfy City, and this is in Texas, a town of about 1,500 um, people located east of Dallas. He was a star athlete in the city public schools growing up, and he returned to his hometown where he worked as a trainer and for the city's public work depart, uh, works department. He was known as a hometown hero, motivational speaker, trainer, professional athlete, communi community advocate. He was dearly loved by everybody, according to this, this, this article I'm reading. Um, he wasn't a criminal. He didn't resist arrest. He did not comply by the cops. He was tased, and when his body went into convulsions, the police perceived that as a threat, and then they shot him to death. That's how he died. Wow. Wow. That's, how he died. That's crazy. I, I, I'm numb. <laughs> you know, I mean, this shit just keeps going on. This train is never ending and it just don't stop. Oh, God. It crazy. just don't. 31 years of age. It's crazy. So again, That's as crazy. we continue to do this, man, as we continue to do this, we got to keep in perspective what's happening. And like we said at the beginning and in the middle, just vote and vote and teach the young ones and try to. I mean, Quince, Quince Town, I think LA was on it, Onika, I know it's like maybe four shows ago when we were talking about the youth and all these other things happening. Um, it's like we can have this talk every week. We can have the same conversation every single week. And again, the average eight, we're all old enough to know that all the stuff has been going on. So, it, and it still does, see, some people don't connect the whole voting thing with what's happening. Some people don't connect it sometimes. It's like, nah, they're two separate incidents, but not right. necessarily, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's 925, y'all. So uh, we've got to start wrapping it up, 926 right now. We appreciate everybody on Facebook tuning in, everybody here in the live audience. Uh, Onika McC <laughs> nah, I better go ahead and let Talent do it first. Talent, man, you got any final words, brother? Yeah, man. Um, in closing, man, I think we 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 do these shows to create some sort of camaraderie that we can walk away with these conversations. I always say, like, you know, splatter these points on the wall, and then we all go do our due diligence and, and do something to make it count or make it better. You know, we're inching towards a cause, 
It's not an overnight thing. We know that from our parents and grandparents and great grandparents, but that don't stop us from completing our mission and doing our part. So I appreciate everybody that come on here, uh, whether you listen to one of the Facebook pages that's streaming and commenting as we go. Um, we bring levity to the situation because that's what we do by trade, but by no means are we laughing at our state and our climate and situation yeah. that we are in this, in this country until we get the job done. So I thank everybody and everybody remember to get out and vote and not just this time because it's the president, vote every time. Vote from your school board and your city council and town council all the way up the primaries, all that stuff, have a voice, make a difference. That's the only way it's gonna happen. This is their system, this is their country. Uh, we revamping what we can, but there's certain things that we just gotta jump on board. And if you got the privilege and the right to vote, why not? Why you not vote? Appreciate you, bro. Monica, final words? Uh, I feel like the wind has been uh, taken out of my cell. So uh, our prayers go out to Jonathan Price's family. Um, and just black people in general. You know, I pray for your safety, your peace. Oh my God. And for us to really get through this so that these conversations will be a thing in the past. It's truly enough is enough. Enough mm -hmm. is enough on so many levels. And um, thank you guys for sharing your time with us. Yeah, uh, every week we try to bring some education and a little bit of lightheartedness to things because this is what we do uh, for a living. And we there are situations that are very serious, but we need to continue to fellowship. We need to continue to talk. We need to continue to uh, look out for one another, do the best that we can um, when we can, while we can, because there are serious things going on in the world. But when we're able to get on here and, and have a conversation, we don't know who we're gonna reach. We don't know who, who we're gonna to touch, but this is something that's necessary. And we do thank you guys. We Everybody has their own opinions and their differences uh, on how they see things, but you, we gotta be on one accord and say there's something wrong with what's happening. There's something wrong with what's happening on a daily basis. You know, you know what I mean? And we can't close our eyes to it and all that extra stuff. So whatever you can do, do. Do the best you can but be safe, continue blessings to you. Uh, we, we look forward to seeing you here next week on Enough is Enough SC 2020. Thank you guys so much, Priscilla. Thank you, LA Blacksmith. Again, thank you guys over there on Facebook. Onika, God bless you. You, you are right with me. Be good, talent jumped off already. So let's continue to pray. That's very important as well. Thank you, good Quincy. Night. All right. Yeah, yeah they, they dropped off. You guys take care of yourselves. All right, good night. have a great week. Be safe, guys. All right, peace.